Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how to do this Thanos smoke portal effect with Typhlo for the little lightning and then Phoenix of D for the smoke effects. So let's set it up from scratch. It's a pretty simple setup, so I'm going to try and do it as quickly as I can. So I'm working in units, centimeters. One unit is one centimeter. We can start just by creating a torus in the middle of our scene, make it about this big. It should be pretty thin. Rotate it and raise it up. And if you sort of look at it, the, the bottom of it should be a little cut off because that's where the ground is. So we can sort of leave the bottom of it, maybe something like this, and then hold shift and drag and copy this one like that. Maybe we can raise the thickness of this. So radius two, maybe we can do 10 and move it back here. Helpers point and just make a point and then make it a box. And I like to make it some other color than green because it's the color of the Phoenix box. So let's make it maybe orange and let's align it to the Taurus. And then I'm going to link the torus to the point. And that's just because I want to be able to control the torus with the point. Then let's make our timeline longer. So 200 frames for now. And then go under material and create a new map. And let's make it a noise map. And then you can lower the high to maybe 0.6 and increase the low to maybe 0.4, which will just give you more contrast. And let's apply that material to the tour just so we can see what's going on and hit show map in viewport. And then we need to decrease the size of this to maybe five and go under, click on the torus and go under the modifier panel and add a UVW map. And you can just leave it as planar. Hit auto key and animate the face of the noise from zero at frame zero to 25 on frame 200. So now, pattern of the noise will keep changing over time like this. Turn off auto key, go under helpers, Phoenix and create a PHX source and add the torus. And then before we forget, click on this small one, go to object properties, make it not renderable, display as box. And then right click again, go to Phoenix FD properties and make it not a solid object. And then under the source, let's give the outgoing velocity maybe 75. So this is the strength of the smoke that's going to be coming out of this torus. So 75 is a value that I found to be, uh, you know, not too much, but not too little to get this kind of violent smoke. We can turn off temperature. We can raise the amount of smoke to two. And then we want to grab this map that we created for the torus and say copy and paste it into this smoke map and say instance. So basically, wherever the mask is black, there will be no smoke emitted. And wherever it's white, there will be smoke emitted at full strength of two with 75 for outgoing velocity. So as the map keeps changing, you're going to get this randomized sort of pattern of smoke bursting out at different points around the torus and also set the noise here to four, which will just randomize the outgoing velocity of the smoke even more. And then we want to go under helpers Phoenix and create a body force and set the strength to 1000. And for the attraction object, let's pick this small torus here. So we're going to emit the smoke from this big torus and it's going to get attracted to the small one. And that's how we get this funnel look of the smoke going to that smaller point. So I also want to add a turbulence. So let's do PHX turbulence. Leave it at strength 200, but with 50 centimeters for size. And then we can create the Phoenix grid. So standard Phoenix fire and smoke sim. And just make a grid like that. Grid and set Z as jammed minus so that the ground of the simulator or the bottom will act as the ground. And we can raise the Z like that. And for the resolution, one centimeter cell size right now is fine. You know, about three million total cells is okay to start. And then I raised it to about eight million from my final simulation, which ended up looking like this. 
but you can give it as much resolution as you want. You can leave it simming overnight if you want. So under dynamics, we can raise smoke dissipation to about 0.4. So this value goes from zero to one with one being that the smoke will instantly immediately disappear. So 0.4 will just make it sort of thin out and sort of look like it's about to disappear back here into the darkness. And then I actually left everything else at default. And then just go under output and make sure that you output velocity. I, I did render this with motion blur, which helps sell it a little bit. So just pick your path here. And then let's simulate a few frames and make sure that this is actually working. All right, so I ran this for 50 frames and everything's looking good. You can go under preview and turn on the GPU preview so you can see the funnel. Click on this torus, go to object properties and make it display as box and not renderable as well. So if I go through my timeline, this is basically our effect as it stands right now. Now, the way I rendered it, basically there's no lights back here, so the smoke just sort of vanishes into darkness. So I know that I'm making it look super easy, but obviously I've already gone through the pain of trying all sorts of different numbers to get this kind of an effect. But the numbers that I just gave you will give you exactly this effect here. So let's just say that we're happy with this as it is, so we can just hide Phoenix for now. And one more thing that I want to do is let's make this display normally again. And I forgot to animate it. So let's just select this control point and set it as it is on frame 50 and go back to frame zero, hit R and just scale the torus down. So that's how we get that opening in the beginning. And then, you know, I added a quick flash of optical flares from Andrew Kramer and it lasts exactly 50 frames so you end up with that opening just like this and you can select the point hit the curve editor and set the point type to auto which is basically smooth so it will give you a curve and it will slowly stop as it's growing and now we're going to use tie flow to add this little lightning sort of going through the funnel so hit r and hold shift and drag and copy this torus and let's name it our emission torus and you can go under materials and maybe give it a red material just so we can differentiate it and make that a little larger than the first one so maybe four and you can scale it down a little bit just to match the other one tie flow create a tie flow object go into the editor and let's drag out a standard birth and we want to emit from zero to 200 per frame and we want to emit about 20 particles per frame and then let's add a position object because we want to birth those particles along the surface of this torus here. So I'm gonna pick our red emission torus and we have some particles being born. And now we basically need to attract those particles to this small torus again, just like we did with the body force. So with die flow, you do that by using the find target operator. So let's drag that out here. And for our target, we want to pick this small torus here. So now we have that funnel again. That's a good start, except the particles don't die. So we need to add a delete operator. And we want to delete the particles based on their age. And then you can just drag this range until you have them about where you want them. But what I actually did, I just increased the variation because I don't want all of these particles to, to reach the end because it's supposed to be sort of just flashes of lightning. So the particles should, some of them should die sooner than others. So I just raised the variation to about 40 and maybe you can lower the range again and then maybe lower the variation a little bit. So we basically want the particles to die around the time when they reach the torus back here. So now our portal sort of gets born and the particles are moving along with the smoke to the small torus and then they die. 
Now we need to give these particles shape and make them look like lightning. So we can just add a shape operator and drag it under the find target. And you can make it 3D for now and just make it grass long, which is as close to lightning as, you, as you'll get. And then we can go under display and make it geometry. And we need to go back under shape and hit scale and maybe scale this up to 500% so we can see it. So now we have these little pieces of grass for now. And let's go under the material and go to standard V-Ray and let's do V-Ray light material and make it sort of like a cool blue and maybe with a five intensity, apply that material straight to tie flow. So now they're blue. Now they're all sort of facing the same direction. So let's add a rotation operator here. So now they have random rotation. So this is what we have right now. And what you can also do is add a spin operator and put it under rotation and maybe set the spin rate to like a thousand so that they keep spinning also on top of having a random rotation in 3D space. All right, so now let's just make something to replace this grass with. So we can go under splines and just create a line and just make a few sort of random points to make it look like lightning. And then you can just play with the vertices a little bit. Maybe delete this one. So something like that. And then let's go into rendering and enable in viewport and in render so you can see how thick it is. And that looks fine. So let's just right click and make it an editable poly. And then you can go under shape and just remove the grass and add selected. Hit the scale size again and make it maybe 10. Okay, that's too small, so maybe 20. Okay, I think that's that's about where I was here. And a lot of these will disappear into the smoke right away, so don't worry too much about, you know, what happens back here. You're never going to see that. You're only going to see a few of these around. And, um, you know, you can always just duplicate this, make it a little different and add it in here so you have more variation. All right, so now in order for us to be able to render this out, we need to add a mesh operator down here. And now we can just go under standard lights and add a few V-Ray lights. All right, so with the V-Ray light, you can set the multiplier to maybe two and then under options, make it invisible and hold shift and drag and make one more, rotate it 180 and then hold shift, make one more and maybe put this one on top. And for this one, you can lower the intensity to maybe one. And then let's unhide Phoenix. So we have our smoke in here. And then maybe we can go under the rendering settings for the smoke. So you would just go under rendering, volumetric options, smoke opacity. And I think I raised the opacity to maybe 0.7 just to make it look thicker. And then under smoke color, I think I made it more black. So something darker like this should work. And then one last detail we want to add is that blue sort of light glow on the inside. So I just made another V-Ray light. And this one you can just make a sphere. And I think I set the multiplier to about five and make the color blue like that. And then everything will turn blue because of the GPU preview. So you can go back into Phoenix go under the GPU preview and here you can click exclude and just exclude that last light and say okay so it will not be shown in the preview so not everything will be blue and then you can just move this blue light basically in the middle of that funnel so about there should be pretty good and I'm just looking at this view right now and you can just you know see where it's at so basically in the middle like that and make sure that it's invisible. And now we can just come over here. And for my quick rendering settings, I'm just using V-Ray Next, um, Bucket 2 and 4 for the sub diffs and 1000 for light cache, that's fine. And let's give it an HD resolution and hit render and see what we get.
All right, so this is the render as of right now. It's very close to what I have here. Now, obviously, I added some curves and color correction and After Effects to make this pop a little more. But you do have this basic render looking pretty good. I think the lightning is a little too bright. So you can go back in the material and maybe lower this to just one. And then what you can do is go to your render settings under render elements and add a V-Ray self illumination pass, which will basically just give you a pass of just the, the lightning. So this is what that pass will look like. You will get just the lightning by itself which then you can use the add transfer mode to add it on top of the funnel and you can go and do effect, stylize, glow and just you know add some glow to to the lightning which can be pretty cool but I actually didn't use this pass at all because I really liked it being very subtle and not drawing too much attention to itself just a few little lightning bolts here and there but mainly the focus is on the smoke and one more thing that you can do is go under standard V-Ray and make a V-Ray plane drop it in here and then you want that to be slightly above the ground sort of penetrating the smoke a little bit so maybe like that into the grid and that will just give you a ground so that the lightning sort of isn't here on its own so you can just go back into the material and make a sort of bland gray ray material with no reflection which will just make it faster to render and apply that material to the v-ray plane and now let's just put our camera in place and see what we get all right, so this is very close to what was my final result. I just think that the light here gives you this sharp thing. So let's just, what you can do is move the light up and rotate a little bit just to get rid of that sharp edge and move it more sort of higher up above the funnel. And then I think that the light inside is a little too bright. So you can just select that light again. And maybe let's lower the multiplier to just two. And you can basically just animate your camera, run the Phoenix simulation, and, and that's about it. And then when you bring it into After Effects, basically all I did was I added this optical flare in the, in the first few frames. And then I cranked up the curves to give it a lot, this nice sort of brighter edge. So really a very simple setup. So I hope that you guys will try and do this effect on your own. I would love to see your results. I would appreciate if you could leave me a comment, you know, letting me know what tutorials do you want to see next. If you like my tutorials, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. I'm going to be uploading more. I have over 50 tutorials on my channel, which you can check out. So thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you later.